Hello guys, I'm Andre Vinakurtsev. Thank you for watching my channel. It was quite a few months since my last presentation and uh, because I moved to the England and I was busy in relocation. Uh, GPU decoding slides were prepared long time ago, I just had not time to make it happen. Uh, now, I don't know if you watched my previous GPU presentation, this is continuation or or help with GPU decoding using FFmpeg. It's quite large topic, can talk hours about this, but make it shorter as much as possible. Uh, to start from the beginning, to whom who don't, don't know what is GPUs, and GPU it is graphic processing unit, it's in addition to the chip, uh, it's similar to CPU, but is additional with mathematical um, capabilities. It's designed to make very complex different tasks, for example, geometric calculation. It, the GPU, uh, it can be inside of the graphic cards, it can be inside of a CPU on your machine, it can be in, in many places now. Now, to see how it looks like GPU by comparing to CPU, CPU is very limited number of cores, GPU is mostly a lot of cores, much smaller cores, but they can be mixed together and do very complex tasks. Uh, this is another picture of GPU very, very deep inside. From this picture, you can see that the host, for example, this is a PC that communicates with GPU unit, and GPU unit has qu quite large number of different blocks, like different local memories, threads, shared memories, kernel. Then uh, the operation of GPU is as in addition to how you operate the CPU. For example, this is example of NVIDIA GPU model. Then. Uh, for example, this is Pascal GeForce GPU with 256 CUDA cores, for example, uh, ARM V8. It does have security engine in addition to the video encoders, video decoders, it has audio decoders, audio encoders, and have very specific units that can be applied. And a bit more is a bit more in depth, for example. This is specifically for the NVIDIA, but we can talk about VAPI and others GPUs. They have a uh, very similar type of uh, units like NVDEC in VAPI, it's VAPI decoder, NVENC in VAPI encoder. Then there is very much similarities with what they can do, but they call different in for, with the different companies. This table, I don't know if you see it, if you want to understand to see which unit, for example, GeForce RTX 2016. For example, if you want to know if the unit of uh, from the NVIDIA can make H.264, for example, H.265 is more interesting stuff, for 8-bit encoder, and which unit is can do this. GeForce GT 1030 with Pascal family can do this. It's just an example to help you out to navigate through uh, through the different type of system. Uh, okay, then why, why do we need the GPU actually to, to rule? We can do everything on software. On hardware is a bit more dense because we can do uh, smaller things and not over overweight the CPU, for example, if we want to decode 4K video, which is much higher than 1080p, we free up CPU and can do it on GPU only. And then uh, only one 4K video on one processor is, is not a big issue. But if you want to make it multiple, then we free up CPU and moving these decode units to the GPU to do it properly. Now, we can do... Uh, on single PC much more 4K decoders than we can do on just one CPU. And of course we can choose much slower CPU with much better GPU and then we can do much more decodes on the GPU. 
and CPU will be freed up to do something else. How we can check the GPU what is capable to do? For example, we have a few different tools like the DXVA checker, for example. If you see it from the bottom side, AMD Fire Pro graphic cards can, can make H.264, for example, decoders only up to resolution FHD using DXVA2 or DirectX3D11. But card graphics 630 from Intel can do already 4K decode. Is it can do encode? I'm not sure it can do encode. It's probably only for as, as a decoder unit. But uh, from this diagram, we can see that not every GPU capable to do the same things. Only if you switch to much better drivers, for example, maybe, or better card. As this is another example of the tools that you can use, GPU Z, that give you much bit more flavor of what is the clocks and what is the bias and what is the version and what is the supporting different buses and much more information. Just one tool sometimes is not enough to understand what's actually happening in GPU while you decoding or encoding. Then uh, FFmpeg is one of the good tools that you can choose to accelerate decoding using hardware acceleration. From the latest version of 4, you can use H.264 and H.265 accelerated decoders. Uh, it can be different, it's more just these decoders. And, and encoders as well, but encoders are not free. And uh, it can be navigated through DXVA2, NVDEC, and VAPI, and all of others. Now, how to do it? Uh, you need to build FFmpeg with special flags. <coughs> One of them is shown here. For example, this is a flux. Uh, usage of this flag when you build the FFmpeg very efficiently to support different features like DXP2 in H.264 or G3D11 in H.264. Uh, if you struggle to find the way how to actually use the hardware accelerated through FFmpeg, you can see the hardware decode.c file is very efficiently simple instruction how to actually accomplish this task. For example, to use CPU to operate with the frame, you need to create the GPU and then you can transfer the data from, from GPU back to CPU, for example. And don't forget to copy the metadata from GPU to CPU to get all the frame. Now, uh, in addition to the uh, information you copied. Don't forget the data is encoded in GPU unit it is mostly stored in format NV12, then conversion from NV12 to YV, for example, for 20 or whatever uh, would require. Now, uh, the efficient way is not to copy back data from GPU to CPU or to any other host machine. Uh, and use directly GPU DMA to the uh, renderer or DMA to some other place and then using the frame. Uh, therefore, if you choose to do this, you don't need to, you can skip the uh, functions like three or four operation. You can see on the bottom. Uh, when the GPU in in actually working order, you want to know is it definitely data operated in GPU or in CPU. With the Windows 10, for example, Task Manager, you can see it immediately for, for every unit, for example, for Intel VAPI or for the NVIDIA, you have additional uh, some GPU managers that you can watch actually really how the data is occupied in GPU unit. For example, GPU-Z give you much more data about GPU, what the clock, what the memory use. 
Now the one idea why you want to use the GPU is supporting more streams, for example high resolution streams or support for example H.265 decoders and require much higher CPU usage than H.264 uh, decoders. Therefore using GPU is much more efficient way to reduce the actually work on CPU. Unfortunately, GPU is very limited. It can do uh, infinite number of decoders or encoders, uh, but properly use a GPU with CPU is will give much higher higher number of decoders on one PC, for example. In addition to this, a FFM can give you uh, ability to multi-thread H.264 and H.265 decoding. Unfortunately, if you choose this way, then the CPU will be absolutely occupied with much more higher rate of the decoding and therefore anything else on GPU will not work. Therefore, you will need to choose or GPU using or CPU multi-threading. And as I've told uh, earlier, rendering much better to use on GPU using instead of copying back to CPU. Then uh, if you choose to use GPU, you can always purchase or buy much slower CPU and machine. And if you want to add more streams to the code, you just purchase GPU unit and stick in the machine. And this will be much cheaper solution or much not. It depends what GPU, GPU unit is which much more expensive than CPU sometimes, but it's depend on the resolution and what you want to achieve. Yes, the, the last sentence is uh, if you want just increase number of G for the code, 4K decoding unit, you just buy another GPU unit and put it in machine instead of buying full machine. It's, I think it's everything for today. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you for watching my channel. Goodbye.